So, your electronics are lost, lonely, and don't know where they are. A GPS unit can help. So we have a very, very simple GPS unit. Most GPS units operate in a very similar protocol, which is you give them power and they start spitting out serial data. So usually the pinouts on a GPS are very, very minimal. This one, as you can see, has four. Uh, it's voltage in, receive, transmit, and ground. And that translates to we need four wires to talk to our UNO. So what we're going to do is we'll just unplug the UNO for now. We're going to wire this all up. Uh, it's very simple. No capacitors, no resistors. Nothing else is needed to make this work. It is probably one of the simplest and coolest projects you can do with an Arduino. Um, these little GPS units cost 10 or 15 bucks. Uh, Canadian dollars in free falls. So they probably cost a million for us now. But um, the code is dead simple. I'm going to be using the tiny GPS++ library, which is uh, very simple to use. There's a bunch of good libraries out there. I think Adafruit has a good library. I mean, GPS hasn't really changed much, so even older libraries are good. I don't think this one's been updated in a few years, and I'm happy with it. So, the way GPS works is pretty simple. In their basic operation, you give them power, so 5 volts in, and this one, as long as it can see the sky with this, will begin, well, it'll start pooping out data on a regular basis, about every, um, I don't know, a little more frequently than a second. But it goes bloop, 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 and it poops out um, a bunch of comma-separated values. It's a data format called NEMA, N-E-N-M-E-A, but you don't need to pay any attention to that. The tiny GPS library takes care of all that. And the, um, the it's very simple serial data, and uh, it will say the status of the GPS, how many satellites it sees, how fast it's going, and whatnot. You can also talk back to the GPS and you can say here's my next waypoint and it will give you course corrections and whatnot. No, not all GPS's can do that and we're not going to do that in this particular tutorial. We're just going to figure out where we are, how high we are, and how fast we're going. We're going to go with a very simple bit of data, which is really what most people want to know from a GPS. The rest of that you can turn into mapping data. Anyway, so let's um, wire this up. I'm going to go with hook the um, receive. The RX is going to be blue. The green is going to be transmit. We'll go with black for ground, of course. And red for 5 volts. Now we're going to be using software serial. I tend to prefer that for a variety of reasons. Um, it's easier to use with the Arduino. So we'll hook up these two pins 10 and 11. So we've got RX going into 11. Uh, sorry, TX going in. RX going to 11, sorry. And TX going into 10. Then we'll hook the ground up to ground. Two grounds there. And 5 volts, the red. So black is ground, red is 5 volts. There we go. This is, as you can see, one of the simplest things to wire in. Then we get some power going into this. And there's no LEDs on the GPS. And I'm going to have to put this up in a window in a moment so that it gets a nice strong signal. I'm expecting maybe 5, 6, 7 satellites, actually 6 or 7 usually. And that's it. I mean, that's the wiring, so now the rest of it's some very simple code, because the um, library takes care of the rest. Anyway, there we go. So I'm going to put this up in the window. Now, one thing that's a bit of a cheat is uh, it can take a little bit of time for a satellite lock. I find this GPS, GPS unit usually gets a satellite lock where I live within a few seconds, like five, six seconds is um, pretty common. And the more recently you've had this operating, the faster the satellite lock will occur. But um, since we're going to be programming for a while, without a doubt, this is going to have a satellite lock from the get-go. But uh, if you um, have just turned this on cold, it's been off for a week or whatever, so everything's changed, then the satellite lock can take a little longer, and your code would probably have to accommodate for that. And you can ask the um, satellite, or you can ask the GPS 
uh, software, do I have a good lock? One way to do it is also to ask how many satellites are there, um, which often gives you a hint. If you've got two satellites, maybe even three, you might not have a lock. If you have seven, you probably have a lock. But anyway, that's that's a bit of a cheat, but um, you can just ask it, do I have a lock? And uh, knowing how many satellites is also critical, because if you only have one or two satellites, you're not going to get a lock. You don't even have to ask. And you are more specifically might want to put some kind of light on your circuit that says, I don't have enough satellites, I need better visibility to the sky, or whatever else the problem might be. Anyway, so we're going to move this up to the window and work on the very, very simple code. Okay, the programming for this is simple. We do a tiny GPS header include, we do a software serial include. I like software serial because it saves me from having to connect to the serial pins on the Arduino. And where we have this continuous data feed coming in from a GPS, um, that would make programming the Arduino a bit of a pain. So we go with a software serial and it just makes programming it that much easier. Uh, now the software serial can use a bit of memory and whatnot. But anyway, so we take a while loop. Uh, it's going to take data coming in from the serial, which is being fed by the GPS unit. Feeds it one character at a time into the GPS library, um, which we've not instantiated an object of, but I'm going to name it GPS. And uh, when an entire sort of package has come in, it will give us an update. Otherwise, it'll be potentially giving us an update on every loop, which we don't want to. And then we look at the lat long. Um, today I think it's going to be imperial day, so we'll go miles per hour and feet, even though I live in a uh, metric country. And But you can ask it all the things. You can say knots, meters, kilometers, everything. I mean, this is, you can ask a lot of data from this library. You can look up what is available, but it's a lot more than what I'm doing here, although most people just want to know how high and lat long. Now, one useful thing is you can get the time out of these libraries, or out of the GPS, and the time is very precise. Uh, so if you have a remote, long-running Arduino that needs to know the exact time, uh, GPS, even if that's all you got out of it, is an excellent way to get um, a very precise time for whatever. So here we are instantiating the GPS object. And, uh, yeah, so put in a few quotes and semicolons that I missed and then we'll upload this so now once we get it uploaded it will immediately begin feeding data so we'll open up the serial port and take a look uh, so that's uh, control shift M on Windows command shift M on um, Max and as you can see it's giving us a beautiful bit of data now this the GPS has had time to warm up because it's been plugged in for a while, so it's found nine satellites, and it's got an excellent lock. And so um, we don't really have to worry about that sort of initial period where it doesn't know where it is. And, of course, if we were somewhere that you can't get the lock, then it wouldn't be giving us very good data. And there's a way you can ask the GPS library for um, whether it's got a lock or not. You can even ask it how precise it thinks it is. But um, we're not doing that here. We're just going for a very simple lat long. But you can also see that I'm moving. And I'm not moving. House isn't moving. City isn't moving. But yet, here I am moving between, well, zero and about a fifth of a mile per hour. So when you're looking at GPS data, you got to just make an assumption that it's not always perfect. Um, if you were flying your drone using this data alone, you're going to um, have trouble. It's either not going to know... <laughs> It's going to not know where the ground is, and it's going to try and go underground or whatever. I mean, it's just... So it's... it's GPS data is a guide. It's a really, really good guide, but it's not perfect. You have to be using another input in order to, to really get the precision you want, especially if, like, as I say, you're trying to, like, if you're trying to fly between trees or something like that. Anyway, we'll verify it by copying the latitude and longitude and go into uh, Google Maps and um, just see where it thinks I am. And there I am in my basically my backyard. It's pretty well exactly where I am. Um, uh, and so, yeah, no, it's a beautiful thing. So we'll just take also a quickie look at the GPS data that we don't have to pay attention to. And it's what uh, the GPS 
library that tiny GPS, tiny GPS library is handling for us. But if you want to do something much more advanced, it's actually not that complicated. It's just a series of serial characters, comma separated. And you can look up the standards and figure out what your GPS unit can do. Anyway, thank you very much for watching the video. Um, all the usual, subscribe and like and comment. And If you have any questions or you'd like to see other things, then just send me a note. Anyway, thanks a lot. Have a good one.